Edges need not be physical boundaries. They can also be psychological edges. These are boundaries that lead to the fanciful and the imaginary. But they need a gate to get there and a path on which to travel. This is the boundary or edge in my creative process that has to be crossed to actually produce new music. This is my edge. The edge across which leads to other worlds, the worlds of the imagination. Professor of Psychology Rainer M. Holm Hadala points out that the creative process takes place in a dynamic interplay between coherence and incoherence, and that pretty well sums it up for me. Inspiration does not come in a blinding flash out of nowhere. Like most of us, I have to work through a process. Feeding on facts, mythology, mystery, experiences, places, conversations, people, so many things, until these make a gestational miasma that gives birth to something new. So, edges need not be physical boundaries. Crossing the psychological edge leads to the imaginary and to the fanciful. And I think that exists in everyone. The truth is, I'm always on the edge. The word edge to me implies a kind of fragility. Knife edge, sharp edge, cliff edge, edgy. Trials and tribulations, the edge of adversity. Being forced to run from the edge of society, right back down to the edge of humanity, to the treacherous ridge between crime and profligacy, sometimes a crossover from glory to tragedy. An edge between go and stay, failure and victory, some might say it's the edge of reality and fantasy. An edge between academic and street, urban and country, with a laptop and a dream, the edge of wealth and poverty. The edge of belonging to people, to locality. The edge of solitude and popularity, with family. The edge of romance, of a man with generosity, hanging by a moment between sweetness and hostility. The edge of past and future is present eventuality. What I want and what I had now is materiality. When I don't know what to do, I'm on the edge of my ability to flow with the universe, the edge of sentimentality. All I hear right now is Lady Gaga on the edge of glory. Maybe it's my theme tune while I'm on the edge of sanity. The edge of land, the edge of sea, the edge of life, of liberty. We are all on the edge of something. Let it be positivity. As musicians, our consciousness is fired by sound. Musical harmony has substance in the planetary layer of consciousness. Musical substances are recycled in what's called the melosphere. I have added a pentagram of five octaves to Coltrane's circle of fifths, giving a much clearer view on the harmonic structure in the cognitive melosphere. I added a second pentagram, five octaves of F-sharp, to Coltrane's circle, because prime numbers indicated its existence. The melosphere of harmony now has ten vertices or edges, two sets of octaves. It has a spin function. It can be set to any key or frequency. I have interpreted as a musician a 3D representation of a mathematical equation that I found on Wikipedia. The top five red tips are octaves of C, the bottom five octaves of F sharp. In between lies a chromatic scale. The inner ring is Coltrane's tone circle. Between the inner and outer rings a surface stretches, inverting inside and outside. When made into a sphere, each pole is attracted to the other because they are perfect fourths and fifths. They are in close proximity to the opposite pole and attract each other because of this. But they simultaneously sound a dissonant diminished fifth. They repel each other. Attraction and repulsion. But paradoxically, 
Harmony unites opposites through inversion. The structure of musical harmony is fractal, like a Mandelbrot tree, and it measures time. Its format remains still, while music moves in sympathetic vibration with resonating surfaces, edges, and consciousnesses. The shore is a transient place. Here, the line between sand and salt water is ever shifting, and the whispered voice of the sea invites us into new possibilities. Far from being rigid boundaries, edges are open, liminal spaces through which we may transition, leaning into new directions and inspiration. They are both real and imaginal, encompassing what is and what may be. Edges are perceived limits. Beyond them, our most imaginative inclinations may take hold of us and draw us into the dance of the waves. Edges may be found everywhere. For example, in my voice there is a dissonance where pitch Resonance, identity, and gender intersect. The implied incongruence between physicality and perception elicits an uncomfortable sharpness. The edge is where we are the most alive and also most at risk. In such places, new creations may be sliced from the fabric of the world. Yet we, too, may be cut as the architecture of our minds and bodies is reshaped. The water's surface is a mirror to inner edges. A metaphor on her way through the moor she comes across a fence, an obstacle which says, stop, you cannot go further, an edge. And there is an on this side of and a behind the fence. She would like to explore what lies behind the fence, has to find a solution. Some people would maybe climb easily over the hindrance, but she can't, as she is bound by her circumstances. Her blind dog is with her and too heavy to lift over the fence. So she decides to walk along the fence in the hope to find a gate. A gate would be an opening, a possibility, a little miracle. It would be a saving of time and energy, a chance to reach her goal, the beach, unhindered, and she may discover a new path, a bit of landscape new to her but there is no gate. She could become impatient, annoyed, frustrated. Instead, she decides to change her intention and ignore the fence completely. And may thread on exciting small pathways through unknown ground, which she wouldn't find without the obstacle standing on her way. <laughs> 